Ethylene oxide, Wikipedia audio. Ethylene oxide, called oxyrane by IUPAC, is an organic compound with the formula C2H4O. It is a cyclic ether and the simplest epoxide, a three-membered ring consisting of one oxygen atom and two carbon atoms. Ethylene oxide is a colorless and flammable gas with a faintly sweet odor. Because it is a strained ring, ethylene oxide easily participates in a number of addition reactions that result in ring opening. Ethylene oxide is isomeric with acetaldehyde and with vinyl alcohol. Ethylene oxide is industrially produced by oxidation of ethylene in the presence of silver catalyst. The reactivity that is responsible for many of ethylene oxide's hazards also make it useful. Although too dangerous for direct household use and generally unfamiliar to consumers, ethylene oxide is used for making many consumer products as well as non-consumer chemicals and intermediates. These products include detergents, thickeners, solvents, plastics, and various organic chemicals such as ethylene glycol, ethanolamines, simple and complex glycols, polyglycol ethers, and other compounds. Although it is a vital raw material with diverse applications, including the manufacture of products like polysorbate 20 and polyethylene glycol that are often more effective and less toxic than alternative materials, ethylene oxide itself is a very hazardous substance. At room temperature it is a flammable, carcinogenic, mutagenic, irritating, and anesthetic gas. As a toxic gas that leaves no residue on items it contacts, Ethylene oxide is a surface disinfectant that is widely used in hospitals and the medical equipment industry to replace steam in the sterilization of heat-sensitive tools and equipment, such as disposable plastic syringes. It is so flammable and extremely explosive that it is used as a main component of thermobaric weapons, therefore, it is commonly handled and shipped as a refrigerated liquid to control its hazardous nature. History Ethylene oxide was first reported in 1859 by the French chemist Charles Adolphe Wurtz, who prepared it by treating 2-chloroethanol with potassium hydroxide. Wurtz measured the boiling point of ethylene oxide as 13.5 degrees Celsius, slightly higher than the present value and discovered the ability of ethylene oxide to react with acids and salts of metals. Wurtz mistakenly assumed that ethylene oxide has the properties of an organic base. This misconception persisted until 1896 when George Bredig found that ethylene oxide is not an electrolyte that it differed from other ethers particularly by its propensity to engage in addition reactions which are typical of unsaturated compounds had long been a matter of debate. The heterocyclic triangular structure of ethylene oxide was proposed by 1868 or earlier. The surface tension of liquid ethylene oxide, at the interface with its own vapor, is 35.8 mJ m2 at 50.1 degrees C and 27.6 mJ m2 at 0.1 degrees C. The boiling point increases with the vapor pressure as follows 57.7 degrees Celsius, 83.6 degrees Celsius, and 114.0 degrees C. Viscosity decreases with temperature with the values of 0.577 kPas at 49.8 degrees C, 0.488 kPas at 38.2 degrees C, 0.394 kPas at 21.0 degrees C, and 0.320 kPas at 0 degrees Celsius. Wurtz's 1859 synthesis long remained the only method of preparing ethylene oxide, despite numerous attempts, including by Wurtz himself, 
to produce ethylene oxide directly from ethylene. Only in 1931 did French chemist Theodore Leffert develop a method of direct oxidation of ethylene in the presence of silver catalyst. Since 1940, almost all industrial production of ethylene oxide has relied on this process. Sterilization by ethylene oxide for the preservation of spices was patented in 1938 by the American chemist Lloyd Hall. Ethylene oxide achieved industrial importance during World War I as a precursor to both the coolant ethylene glycol and the chemical weapon mustard gas. The epoxy cycle of ethylene oxide is an almost regular triangle with bond angles of about 60 degrees and a significant angular strain corresponding to the energy of 105 kJ slash mole. For comparison, in alcohols the COH angle is about 110 degree, in ethers, the COC angle is 120 degrees. The moment of inertia about each of the principal axes are IA equals 32.921 times 1040 GCM2, IB equals 37.926 times 1040 GCM2 and IC equals 59.510 times 1040 GCM2. The relative instability of the carbon-oxygen bonds in the molecule is revealed by the comparison in the table of the energy required to break two CO bonds in the ethylene oxide or one CO bond in ethanol and dimethyl ether. This instability correlates with its high reactivity, explaining the ease of its ring-opening reactions. Ethylene oxide is a colorless gas at 25 degrees Celsius and is a mobile liquid at 0 degrees Celsius. Viscosity of liquid ethylene oxide at 0 degrees Celsius is about 5.5 times lower than that of water. The gas has a characteristic sweet odor of ether, noticeable when its concentration in air exceeds 500 ppm. Ethylene oxide is readily soluble in water, ethanol, diethyl ether, and many organic solvents. Main reactor, ethylene oxide scrubber, ethylene oxide desorber, stripping and distillation column, CO2, scrubber and county 2 descrubber. Main thermodynamical constants are Between 91 and 10.5 degrees Celsius Vapor pressure P varies with temperature as Lg P equals 6.2251 plus T I exposure 18 mg slash 6 hours oral 72 mg slash kg 1186 mg slash kg 5112 mg slash kg inhalation 12500 ppm 960 ppm slash 4 hours 3350 ppm 800 ppm slash 4 hours subcutaneous injection 100 mg slash kg 292 mg slash kg 902 comma 600 mg slash kg 187 mg slash kg intraperitoneal injection 750 mg slash kg 175 mg slash kg intravenous injection 175 mg slash kg 290 mg slash kg the u.s environmental protection agency estimated in 2016 that for low doses the inhalation of ethylene oxide for a lifetime could increase an individual's lifetime cancer risk by as much as 3.0 times 10.3 per mu g slash m3 the uspa estimated the slope of the dose response declines at higher doses an extra cancer risk estimates for several occupational exposure scenarios are calculated. Molecular Structure and Properties 
Asterisk and slash a data not available. Asterisk and slash a data not available. Ethylene oxide readily reacts with diverse compounds with opening of the ring. Its typical reactions are with nucleophiles which proceed via the SN2 mechanism both in acidic and alkaline media. The general reaction scheme is. And more specific reactions are described below. Aqueous solutions of ethylene oxide are rather stable and can exist for a long time without any noticeable chemical reaction, but adding a small amount of acid, such as strongly diluted sulfuric acid, immediately leads to the formation of ethylene glycol, even at room temperature. The reaction also occurs in the gas phase, in the presence of a phosphoric acid salt as a catalyst. The reaction is usually carried out at about 60 degrees Celsius with a large excess of water, in order to prevent the reaction of the formed ethylene glycol with ethylene oxide that would form D and triethylene glycol. Physical Properties Chemical Properties the use of alkaline catalysts may lead to the formation of polyethylene glycol. Addition of water and alcohols. Addition of carboxylic acids and their derivatives. Adding ammonia and amines. Halide addition. Metal organic addition. Reactions with alcohols proceed similarly yielding ethylene glycol ethers. Reactions with lower alcohols occur less actively than with water and require more severe conditions, such as heating to 160 degrees Celsius and pressurizing to 3 MPa and adding an acid or alkali catalyst. Reactions of ethylene oxide with fatty alcohols proceed in the presence of sodium metal, sodium hydroxide, or boron trifluoride and are used for the synthesis of surfactants. Other addition reactions Reactions of ethylene oxide with carboxylic acids in the presence of a catalyst results in glycol mono and diesters. The addition of acid amides proceeds similarly. Addition of ethylene oxide to higher carboxylic acids is carried out at elevated temperatures and pressure in an inert atmosphere, in presence of an alkaline catalyst such as hydroxide or carbonate of sodium or potassium. The carboxylate ion acts as nucleophile in the reaction. Ethylene oxide reacts with ammonia forming a mixture of mono, D and triethanolamines. The reaction is stimulated by adding a small amount of water. Similarly proceed the reactions with primary and secondary amines. Diacylaminoethanols can further react with ethylene oxide, forming amino polyethylene glycols. Trimethylamine reacts with ethylene oxide in the presence of water, forming choline. Addition of hydrogen cyanide. Aromatic primary and secondary amines also react with ethylene oxide, forming the corresponding aryl amino alcohols. Ethylene oxide readily reacts with aqueous solutions of hydrochloric, hydrobromic and hydroiodic acids to form halohydrins. The reaction occurs easier with the last two acids. Addition of hydrogen sulfide and mercaptans. The reaction with these acids competes with the acid-catalyzed hydration of ethylene oxide, therefore. There is always a byproduct of ethylene glycol with an admixture of diethylene glycol. For a cleaner product, the reaction is conducted in the gas phase or in an organic solvent. Ethylene fluorohydrin is obtained differently by boiling hydrogen fluoride with a 5-6% solution of ethylene oxide in diethyl ether. The ether normally has a water content of 1.52%. In absence of water, ethylene oxide polymerizes. Addition of nitrous and nitric acids. 
Reaction with compounds containing active methylene groups Alkylation of aromatic compounds Halohydrins can also be obtained by passing ethylene oxide through aqueous solutions of metal halides. Interaction of ethylene oxide with organomagnesium compounds, which are Grignard reagents, can be regarded as nucleophilic substitution influenced by carbanion organometallic compounds. The final product of the reaction is a primary alcohol. Similar mechanism is valid for other organometallic compounds, such as alkyl lithium. Ethylene oxide easily reacts with the hydrogen cyanide forming ethylene cyanohydrin. A slightly chilled aqueous solution of calcium cyanide can be used instead of HCN. Ethylene cyanohydrin easily loses water, producing acrylonitrile. When reacting with the hydrogen sulfide, ethylene oxide forms two mercaptoethanol and thiodiglycol, and with alkyl mercaptans it produces two alkyl mercaptoethanol. The excess of ethylene oxide with an aqueous solution of hydrogen sulfide leads to the trisulfonyl hydroxide. Reaction of ethylene oxide with aqueous solutions of barium nitrite, calcium nitrite, magnesium nitrite, zinc nitrite, or sodium nitrite leads to the formation of 2-nitroethanol. With nitric acid, ethylene oxide forms mono- and dinitroglycols. In the presence of alkoxides, Reactions of ethylene oxide with compounds containing active methylene group leads to the formation of butyrolactones. Ethylene oxide enters into the Friedel-Crafts reaction with benzene to form phenethyl alcohol. Styrene can be obtained in one stage if this reaction is conducted at elevated temperatures and pressures, in presence of an aluminosilicate catalyst. A series of polynomial heterocyclic compounds, known as crown ethers, can be synthesized with ethylene oxide. One method is the cationic cyclopolymerization of ethylene oxide, limiting the size of the formed cycle. To suppress the formation of other linear polymers the reaction is carried out in a highly dilute solution. Reaction of ethylene oxide with sulfur dioxide in the presence of cesium salts leads to the formation of an 11-membered heterocyclic compound which has the complexing properties of crown ethers. When heated to about 400 degrees Celsius, or to 150-300 degrees C in the presence of a catalyst, ethylene oxide isomerizes into acetaldehyde. The radical mechanism was proposed to explain this reaction in the gas phase, it comprises the following stages. In reaction, M refers to the wall of the reaction vessel or to a heterogeneous catalyst. The moiety CH3CHO asterisk represents a short-lived, activated molecule of acetaldehyde. Its excess energy is about 355.6 kJ slash mole, which exceeds by 29.3 kJ slash mole the binding energy of the C-C bond in acetaldehyde. In absence of a catalyst, the thermal isomerization of ethylene oxide is never selective and apart from acetaldehyde yields significant amount of byproducts. Ethylene oxide can be hydrogenated into ethanol in the presence of a catalyst, such as nickel, platinum, palladium, boranes, lithium aluminium hydride and some other hydrides. Conversely, with some other catalysts, ethylene oxide may be reduced by hydrogen to ethylene with the yield up to 70%. The reduction catalysts include mixtures of zinc dust and acetic acid, of lithium aluminium hydride with titanium trichloride and of iron chloride with butyl lithium in tetrahydrofuran. Ethylene oxide can further be oxidized, depending on the conditions, to glycolic acid or carbon dioxide. 
deep gas phase reactor oxidation of ethylene oxide at 801,000 K and a pressure of 0.11 MPa yields a complex mixture of products containing O2, H2, CO, CO2, CH4, C2H2, C2H4, C2H6, C3H6, C3H8 and CH3 CHO. In the presence of acid catalysts, ethylene oxide dimerizes to a Ford dioxane. The reaction mechanism is as follows. The dimerization reaction is unselective. Byproducts include acetaldehyde. The selectivity and speed of dimerization can be increased by adding a catalyst, such as platinum, platinum palladium, or iodine with sulfolane. 2 methyl 1,3 dioxalane is formed as a side product in the last case. Liquid ethylene oxide can form polyethylene glycols. The polymerization can proceed via radical and ionic mechanisms, but only the latter has a wide practical application. Cationic polymerization of ethylene oxide is assisted by protonic acids, Lewis acids, organometallic compounds, or more complex reagents. The reaction mechanism is as follows. At the first stage, the catalyst is initiated by alkyl or acyl halogen or by compounds with active hydrogen atoms, usually water, alcohol, or glycol. The resulting active complex reacts with ethylene oxide via the SN2 mechanism. The chain breaks as Anionic polymerization of ethylene oxide is assisted by bases, such as alkoxides, hydroxides, carbonates, or other compounds of alkali or alkaline earth metals. The reaction mechanism is as follows. Ethylene oxide is relatively stable to heating in the absence of a catalyst, it does not dissociate up to 300 degrees Celsius, and only above 570 degrees Celsius there is a major exothermic decomposition, which proceeds through the radical mechanism. The first stage involves isomerization, however high temperature accelerates the radical processes. They result in a gas mixture containing acetaldehyde, ethane, ethyl, methane, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, ketene, and formaldehyde. High temperature pyrolysis at elevated pressure in an inert atmosphere leads to a more complex composition of the gas mixture, which also contains acetylene and propane. Contrary to the isomerization, Initiation of the chain occurs mainly as follows. When carrying the thermal decomposition of ethylene oxide in the presence of transition metal compounds as catalysts, it is possible not only to reduce its temperature, but also to have ethyl as the main product, that is to reverse the ethylene oxide synthesis reaction. Thiocyanate ions or thiourea transform ethylene oxide into thiourane. Reaction of phosphorus pentachloride with ethylene oxide produces ethylene dichloride. Other dichloride derivatives of ethylene oxide can be obtained by combined action of sulfuryl chloride and pyridine and of triphenylphosphine and carbon tetrachloride. Phosphorus trichloride reacts with ethylene oxide forming chloroethyl esters of phosphorus acid. Synthesis of Crown Ethers The reaction product of ethylene oxide with acyl chlorides in the presence of sodium iodide is a complex iodoethyl ester. Heating ethylene oxide to 100 degrees Celsius with carbon dioxide in a nonpolar solvent in the presence of bisnickel results in ethylene carbonate. In industry, a similar reaction is carried out at high pressure and temperature in the presence of quaternary ammonium or phosphonium salts as a catalyst. Reaction of ethylene oxide with formaldehyde at 8150 degrees C in the presence of a catalyst leads to the formation of 1,3-dioxalane.
substituting formaldehyde by other aldehydes or ketones results in a 2 substituted 1,3 dioxalane. Isomerization Catalytic hydroformylation of ethylene oxide gives hydroxypropanol which can be hydrogenated to propane 1,3 diol. Dehydrochlorination of 2-chloroethanol, developed by Wurtz back in 1859, remains a common laboratory route to ethylene oxide. Reduction reaction The reaction is carried out at elevated temperature, and besides sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide, or carbonates of alkali or alkaline earth metals can be used. With a high yield ethylene oxide can be produced by treating calcium oxide with ethyl hypochlorite, substituting calcium by other alkaline earth metals reduces the reaction yield. Oxidation Dimerization Ethylene can be directly oxidized into ethylene oxide using peroxy acids, for example, peroxybenzoic or metachloroperoxybenzoic acid. Oxidation by peroxy acids is efficient for higher alkenes, but not for ethylene. The above reaction is slow and has low yield. Therefore it is not used in the industry. Other synthesis methods include reaction of diiodoethane with silver oxide. Polymerization Thermal decomposition Other reactions Laboratory synthesis Dehydrochlorination of ethylene and its derivatives Direct oxidation of ethylene by peroxy acids. Other preparative methods. Industrial synthesis. History 2. Chlorohydrin process of production of ethylene oxide. Direct oxidation of ethylene. Usage in global industry. Chemistry and kinetics of the direct oxidation process. Process Overview World Production of Ethylene Oxide Applications And decomposition of ethylene carbonate at 200-210 degrees C in the presence of hexachlorothane. Commercial production of ethylene oxide dates back to 1914 when BASF built the first factory which used the chlorohydrin process. The chlorohydrin process was unattractive for several reasons, including low efficiency and loss of valuable chlorine into calcium chloride. More efficient direct oxidation of ethylene by air was invented by Lefford in 1931 and in 1937 Union Carbide opened the first plant using this process. It was further improved in 1958, by Shell Oil County by replacing air with oxygen and using elevated temperature of 200-300 degrees C and pressure. This more efficient routine accounted for about half of ethylene oxide production in the 1950s in the U.S., and after 1975 it completely replaced the previous methods. The production of ethylene oxide accounts for approximately 11% of worldwide ethylene demand. Although the chlorohydrin process is almost entirely superseded in the industry by the direct oxidation of ethylene, the knowledge of this method is still important for educational reasons and because it is still used in the production of propylene oxide. The process consists of three major steps. Synthesis of ethylene chlorohydrin, dehydrochlorination of ethylene chlorohydrin to ethylene oxide and purification of ethylene oxide. Those steps are carried continuously. In the first column, hypochlorination of ethylene is carried out as follows. To suppress the conversion of ethylene into the ethylene dichloride, the concentration of ethylene is maintained at about 4-6%, and the solution is heated by steam to the boiling point. Next, 
aqueous solution of ethylene chlorohydrin enters the second column, where it reacts with a 30% solution of calcium hydroxide at 100 degrees Celsius. The produced ethylene oxide is purified by rectification. The chlorohydrin process allows to reach 95% conversion of ethylene chlorohydrin. The yield of ethylene oxide is about 80% of the theoretical value, for 1 ton of ethylene oxide, about 200 kg of ethylene dichloride is produced. But, the major drawbacks of this process are high chlorine consumption and effluent load. This process is now obsolete. Direct oxidation of ethylene was patented by Lefford in 1931. This method was repeatedly modified for industrial use, and at least four major variations are known. They all use oxidation by oxygen or air in a silver-based catalyst, but differ in the technological details and hardware implementations. Union Carbide was the first company to develop the direct oxidation process. Production of Ethylene Glycol a similar production method was developed by Scientific Design Co., but it received wider use because of the licensing system it accounts for 25% of the world's production and for 75% of world's licensed production of ethylene oxide. A proprietary variation of this method is used by Japan Catalytic Chemical Co., which adapted synthesis of both ethylene oxide and ethylene glycol in a single industrial complex. A different modification was developed Shell International Chemicals BV. Their method is rather flexible with regard to the specific requirements of specific industries, it is characterized by high selectivity with respect to the ethylene oxide product and long lifetime of the catalyst. It accounts for about 40% of global production. Older factories typically use air for oxidation whereas newer plants and processes, such as Meteor and Japan Catalytic, favor oxygen. Production of Glycol Ethers Formally, the direct oxidation process is expressed by the following equation. However, Significant yield of carbon dioxide and water is observed in practice, which can be explained by the complete oxidation of ethylene or ethylene oxide. Production of ethanolamines The process of heterogeneous catalytic oxidation of ethylene was studied by P. A. Kilty and W. M. H. Satchtler, who suggested the following mechanism. Here refers to particles adsorbed on the catalyst surface and to particles of silver, directly adjacent to the oxygen atoms. In this process, 1,2-dichloroethane, vinyl chloride are used as inhibitors so as to prevent further oxidation of ethylene oxide to CO2 and H2O. Here, the chemisorbed chlorine hinders dissociative chemisorption of atomic oxygen. Production of ethoxylates Thus the overall reaction is expressed as And the maximum degree of conversion of ethylene to ethylene oxide is 6 sevenths or 85.7%. The catalyst for the reaction is metallic silver deposited on various matrices, including pumice, silica gel, various silicates, and aluminosilicates, alumina and silicon carbide and activated by certain additives. The process temperature was optimized as 222.80 degrees C. Lower temperatures reduce the activity of the catalyst, and higher temperatures promote the complete oxidation of ethylene thereby reducing the yield of ethylene oxide. Elevated pressure of 1,3 MPa increases the productivity of the catalyst and facilitates absorption of ethylene oxide from the reacting gases. Whereas oxidation by air is still being used, oxygen is preferred for several reasons, such as higher molar yield of ethylene oxide, 
higher reaction rate and no need of separating nitrogen in the reaction products. Production of Acrylonitrile The production of ethylene oxide on a commercial scale is attained with the unification of the following unit processes. Main Reactor The main reactor consists of thousands of catalyst tubes in bundles. These tubes are generally 6 to 15 m long with an inner diameter of 20 to 50 mm. The catalyst packed in these tubes is in the form of spheres or rings of diameter 3 to 10 mm. The operating conditions of 200-300 degree C with a pressure of 1-3 MPa prevail in the reactor. To maintain this temperature, the cooling system of the reactor plays a vital role. With the aging of the catalyst, its selectivity decreases and it produces more exothermic side products of CO2. Non-industrial uses Ethylene oxide scrubber, after the gaseous stream from the main reactor, containing ethylene oxide and CO2, is cooled, it is then passed to the ethylene oxide scrubber. Here, Water is used as the scrubbing media which scrubs away majority of ethylene oxide along with some amounts of CO2, N2, CH2 equals CH2, CH4, and aldehydes. Also, a small proportion of the gas leaving the ethylene oxide scrubber is removed continuously to prevent the buildup of inert compounds, which are introduced as impurities with the reactants. Healthcare sterilant Ethylene oxide desorber, the aqueous stream resulting from the above scrubbing process is then sent to the ethylene oxide desorber. Here, ethylene oxide is obtained as the overhead product, whereas the bottom product obtained is known as the glycol bleed. When ethylene oxide is scrubbed from the recycle gas with an aqueous solution, ethylene glycols get unavoidably produced. Thus, in order to prevent them from building up in the system, they are continuously bled off. Niche uses Stripping and distillation column, here, the ethylene oxide stream is stripped off its low boiling components and then distilled in order to separate it into water and ethylene oxide. Identification of ethylene oxide Fire and explosion hazards Accidents involving ethylene oxide explosion Physiological effects CO2 scrubber, the recycle stream obtained from the ethylene oxide scrubber is compressed and a side stream is fed to the CO2 scrubber. Here. CO2 gets dissolved into the hot aqueous solution of potassium carbonate. The dissolution of CO2 is not only a physical phenomenon, but a chemical phenomenon as well, for, the CO2 reacts with potassium carbonate to produce potassium hydrogen carbonate. Effect on microorganisms CO2 descrubber the above potassium carbonate solution is then sent to the CO2 descrubber where CO2 is descrubbed by stepwise flashing. The first step is done to remove the hydrocarbon gases, and the second step is employed to strip off CO2. Effects on humans and animals Global demand Cited sources the world production of ethylene oxide was 20 million tons in 2009, 19 million tons in 2008 and 18 million tons in 2007. This places ethylene oxide 14th most produced organic chemical, whereas the most produced one was ethylene with 113 million tons. SRI Consulting forecasted the growth of consumption of ethylene oxide of 4.4% per year during 2008-2013 and 3% from 2013 to 2018. In 2004, the global production of ethylene oxide by region was as follows. 
The world's largest producers of ethylene oxide are Dow Chemical Company in 2006, Saudi Basic Industries in 2006, Royal Dutch Shell in 2008-2009, BASF in 2008-2009, China Petrochemical Corporation in 2006, Formosa Plastics in 2006 and Ineos in 2008-2009. Ethylene oxide is one of the most important raw materials used in large-scale chemical production. Most ethylene oxide is used for synthesis of ethylene glycols, including diethylene glycol and triethylene glycol, that accounts for up to 75% of global consumption. Other important products include ethylene glycol ethers, ethanolamines, and ethoxylates. Among glycols, ethylene glycol is used as antifreeze, in the production of polyester and polyethylene terephthalate, liquid coolants, and solvents. Polyethylene glycols are used in perfumes, cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, lubricants, paint thinners, and plasticizers. Ethylene glycol ethers are part of brake fluids, detergents, solvents, lacquers, and paints. Other products of ethylene oxide Ethanolamines are used in the manufacture of soap and detergents and for purification of natural gas. Ethoxylates are reaction products of ethylene oxide with higher alcohols, acids, or amines. They are used in the manufacture of detergents, surfactants, emulsifiers, and dispersants. Whereas synthesis of ethylene glycols is the major application of ethylene oxide, its percentage varies greatly depending on the region, from 44% in the Western Europe, 63% in Japan and 73% in North America to 90% in the rest of Asia and 99% in Africa. Ethylene glycol is industrially produced by non-catalytic hydration of ethylene oxide at a temperature of 200 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 1.52 MPa. Byproducts of the reaction are diethylene glycol, triethylene glycol, and polyglycols with the total of about 10%, which are separated from the ethylene glycol by distillation at reduced pressure. Another synthesis method is the reaction of ethylene oxide and CO2 and pressure of 5.2 MPa yielding ethylene carbonate and its subsequent hydrolysis with decarboxylation. Modern technologies of production of ethylene glycol include the following. Shell Omega technology is a two-step synthesis of ethylene carbonate using a phosphonium halide as a catalyst. The glycol yield is 99.99.5%, with other glycols practically absent. The main advantage of the process is production of pure ethylene glycol without the need for further purification. The first commercial plant which uses this method was opened in 2008 in South Korea. Dow Meteor is an integrated technology for producing ethylene oxide and its subsequent hydrolysis into ethylene glycol. The glycol yield is 90-93%. The main advantage of the process is relative simplicity, using fewer stages and less equipment. The major industrial esters of mono, D and triethylene glycols are methyl, ethyl, and normal butyl ethers, as well as their acetates and phthalates. The synthesis involves reaction of the appropriate alcohol with ethylene oxide. The reaction of monoesters with an acid or its anhydride leads to the formation of the esters. In the industry, Ethanolamines are produced by reacting ammonia and ethylene oxide in anhydrous medium at a temperature of 40-70 degrees C and pressure of 1.53.5 MPa MPa. All three ethanolamines are produced in the process, while ammonia and part of methylamine are recycled. The final products are separated by vacuum distillation. 
hydroxyacilamines are produced in a similar process. Monosubstituted products are formed by reacting a large excess of amine with ethylene oxide in presence of water and at a temperature below 100 degrees Celsius. Disubstituted products are obtained with a small excess of ethylene oxide, at a temperature of 120-140 degrees C and a pressure of 0.30.5 MPa. Industrial production of ethoxylates is realized by a direct reaction of higher alcohols, acids, or amines with ethylene oxide in the presence of an alkaline catalyst at a temperature of 120-180 degrees C. Modern plants producing ethoxylates are usually based on the bus loop reactors technology, which is based on a three-stage continuous process. In the first stage, the initiator, or catalyst of the reaction and the feedstock are fed into the container, where they are mixed, heated and vacuum dried. Then reaction is carried out in a special insulated reactor in an inert atmosphere to prevent a possible explosion of ethylene oxide. Finally, the reaction mixture is neutralized, degassed and purified. Currently, most acrylonitrile is produced by the Sohio method, which is based on the catalytic oxidation of propylene in the presence of ammonia and bismuth phosphomolybdate. However, until 1960 a key production process was addition of hydrogen cyanide to ethylene oxide, followed by dehydration of the resulting cyanohydrin. Addition of hydrocyanic acid to ethylene oxide is carried out in the presence of a catalyst, and dehydration of cyanohydrin occurs in the gas phase upon the catalytic action of aluminium oxide. The direct use of ethylene oxide accounts for only 0.05% of its global production. Ethylene oxide is used as a sterilizing agent, disinfecting agent, and fumigant as a mixture with carbon dioxide, nitrogen or dichlorodifluoromethane. It is applied for gas phase sterilization of medical equipment and instruments, packaging materials, and clothing surgical and scientific equipment, for processing of storage facilities, clothing, furs, and valuable documents. Ethylene oxide is one of the most commonly used sterilization methods in the healthcare industry because of its non-damaging effects for delicate instruments and devices that require sterilization, and for its wide range of material compatibility. It is used for instruments that cannot tolerate heat, moisture, or abrasive chemicals, such as electronics, optical equipment, paper, rubber, and plastics. It was developed in the 1940s as a sterilant by the U.S. military, and its use as a medical sterilant dates to the late 1950s, when the McDonald process was patented for medical devices. The Anproline system was patented in the 1960s by Anderson Products, and it remains the most commonly used system in several niche markets, notably the veterinary market and some international markets. It relies on the use of a flexible sterilization chamber and an ETO cartridge for small volume sterilization, and where environmental and slash or portability considerations dictate the use of a low dose. It is therefore referred to as the flexible chamber sterilization method, or the gas diffusion sterilization method. In the United States, the operation of ETO sterilization is overseen by the EPA through the National Emission Standard for Hazardous Air Pollutants. Ethylene oxide is used as an accelerator of maturation of tobacco leaves and fungicide. Ethylene oxide is also used as a main component of thermobaric weapons. Ethylene is used in the synthesis in 2-butoxyethanol, which is a solvent used in many products. Gas chromatography is the principal method for analysis and detection of ethylene oxide. 
An inexpensive test for ethylene oxide exploits its precipitation of solids hydroxides of metals when it is passed through aqueous solutions of their salts. Similarly, ethylene oxide is detected by the bright pink color of the indicator when passing air through aqueous solutions of some salts of sodium or potassium with the addition of phenolphthalene. Other methods of ethylene oxide detection are color reactions with pyridine derivatives and hydrolysis of ethylene glycol with periodic acid. The produced iodic acid is detected with silver nitrate. Ethylene oxide is extremely flammable, and its mixtures with air are explosive. When heated it may rapidly expand, causing fire and explosion. The auto-ignition temperature is 429 degrees Celsius, decomposition temperature of 571 degrees Celsius at 101.3 kPa, minimum inflammable content in the air is 2.7%, and maximum limit is 100%. The NFPA rating is NFPA 704. Ethylene oxide in presence of water can hydrolyze to ethylene glycol and form polyethylene oxide which then eventually gets oxidized by air and leads to hot spots that can trigger to explosive decomposition. Fires caused by ethylene oxide are extinguished by traditional media, including foam, carbon dioxide, or water. Suppression of this activity can be done by blanketing with an inert gas until total pressure reaches non-explosive range. Extinguishing of burning ethylene oxide is complicated by that it can continue burning in an inert atmosphere and in water solutions. Fire suppression is reached only upon dilution with water above 22,1. An ethylene oxide explosion on August 19. 2004 in Sterogenics International Incorporated in Ontario, California, USA injured four employees and severely damaged the medical products sterilization facility. It was caused by workers skipping a crucial step in removing ethylene oxide from a sterilization chamber. Exposure to ethylene oxide gas causes alkylation to microorganisms at a nuclear level. The disinfectant effect of ethylene oxide is similar to that of sterilization by heat, but because of limited penetration, it affects only the surface. Edo sterilization can take up to 12 hours due to its slow action upon microorganisms, and lengthy processing and aeration time. Ethylene oxide is an alkylating agent, it has irritating, sensitizing, and narcotic effects. Chronic exposure to ethylene oxide is also mutagenic. The International Agency for Research on Cancer classifies ethylene oxide into Group 1, meaning it is a proven carcinogen. Ethylene oxide is classified as a Class II carcinogen by the German MAC Commission and as a Class A2 carcinogen by the ACGI. A 2003 study of 7,576 women exposed while at work in commercial sterilization facilities in the U.S. suggests ethylene oxide is associated with breast cancer incidence. A 2004 follow-up study analyzing 18,235 men and women workers exposed to ethylene oxide from 1987 to 1998 concluded there was little evidence of any excess cancer mortality for the cohort as a whole, with the exception of bone cancer based on small numbers. Positive exposure response trends for lymphoid tumors were found for males only. Reasons for the sex specificity of this effect are not known. There was also some evidence of a positive exposure response for breast cancer mortality. An increased incidence of brain tumors and mononuclear cell leukemia was found in rats that had inhaled ethylene oxide at concentrations of 10, 33, or 100 ml/m3 over a period of two years. 
An increased incidence of peritoneal mesotheliomas was also observed in the animals exposed to concentrations of 33 and 100 ml-m3. Results of human epidemiological studies on workers exposed to ethylene oxide differ. There is evidence from both human and animal studies that inhalation exposure to ethylene oxide can result in a wide range of carcinogenic effects. Ethylene oxide is toxic by inhalation, with a U.S. OSHA permissible exposure limit calculated as a TWA over 8 hours of 1 ppm, and a short-term exposure limit calculated as a TWA over 15 minutes of 5 ppm. At concentrations in the air about 200 parts per million, ethylene oxide irritates mucous membranes of the nose and throat. Higher contents cause damage to the trachea and bronchi, progressing into the partial collapse of the lungs. High concentrations can cause pulmonary edema and damage the cardiovascular system. The damaging effect of ethylene oxide may occur only after 72 hours after exposure. The maximum content of ethylene oxide in the air according to the U.S. standards is 1.8 mg m3. Niche has determined that the immediately dangerous to life and health level is 800 ppm. Because the odor threshold for ethylene oxide varies between 250 and 700 ppm, the gas is already at toxic concentrations when it can be smelled. Even then, the odor of ethylene oxide is sweet, aromatic, and can easily be mistaken for the pleasant aroma of diethyl ether, a common laboratory solvent of very low toxicity. In view of these insidious warning properties, continuous electrochemical monitors are standard practice, and it is forbidden to use ethylene oxide to fumigate building interiors in the EU and some other jurisdictions. Ethylene oxide causes acute poisoning, accompanied by a variety of symptoms. Central nervous system effects are frequently associated with human exposure to ethylene oxide in occupational settings. Headache, nausea, and vomiting have been reported. Peripheral neuropathy, impaired hand-eye coordination and memory loss have been reported in more recent case studies of chronically exposed workers at estimated average exposure levels as low as 3 ppm. The metabolism of ethylene oxide is not completely known. Data from animal studies indicate two possible pathways for the metabolism of ethylene oxide, hydrolysis to ethylene glycol and glutathione conjugation to form mercapturic acid and methiometabolites. Ethylene oxide easily penetrates through ordinary clothing and footwear causing skin irritation and dermatitis with the formation of blisters, fever, and leukocytosis. Toxicity data for ethylene oxide are as follows. Global EO demand has expanded from 16.6 mt in 2004 to 20 mt in 2009, while demand for refined EO expanded from 4.64 mt in 2004 to 5.6 mt in 2008. In 2009, demand is estimated to have declined to about 5.2 mt. Total EO demand registered a growth rate of 5.6% per annum during the period 2005 to 2009 and is projected to grow at 5.7% per annum during 2009 to 2013.